Thank you, sir. At the outset, I place on record our heartfelt gratitude to the chairman of this August House for personally undertaking a tour to the eight northeastern states lately. Coming from a man of his stature, a leader of this country, it speaks volumes of his concern and affection for the region. On behalf of the people of this region, I place on record our deepest gratitude. I can't help it but reflect on the principal act of the Northeastern Council's enactment by the Parliament, which was made in the year 1971, and the NEC became functional the next year, in 1972. The original intent and the objectives of having constituted this council has to be reviewed and revisited again. It is exactly half a century that the NSC came into being and the Act has undergone some changes after about two and a half decades. While recollecting the visionary objectives of the leaders of successive governments, successive prime ministers, and the tallest leaders of the government of this country, and the wisdom behind why they have created this council, we may take into account and acknowledge the original factors which have motivated them. One factor we can attribute to is that uh, most of the states in this region had joined the nation only in the third and fourth five-year plans. They had become states, full-fledged states, during those years only. So we could not be given the attention and the attributions required for running a state in that part. Maybe. Another is, for the first time, after all the hostilities and the ambivalent attitude of the center, the 1971 war with Pakistan and the liberation of Bangladesh brought about the integrity, commitment, and the contributions of the people of this region. It is a very strategic, a very strategic region geopolitically, it's surrounded by five countries. And so the vulnerability and the sensitive issues are connected to the people of this region. Now, why the NEC has been constituted and why it had as members in the council all the governors of the eight states as its members, and all the chief ministers of the eight states also as members of this council. They had in rotation that the eight governors will take turns to be the chairman of these councils. So all the needs, all the requirements of the indigenous people in that region 
were brought to this council, deliberated, considered, and they were taken up on priority as the schemes or projects to be implemented in the various states of this region. This is because they are there in the region and they feel the pulse of the people of their respective states. They understand the sentiments and the emotions and they also understand the requirements, the basic requirements of the people of this region. So they were the best representatives to represent their states and act as the members in this regional planning council. That was the reason why the NEC, the Northeastern Council, came into being. After about two and a half decades, an amendment, an amendment took place where they have also branched out a department of the development of Northeastern region under the Ministry of Home Affairs. And this became the administrative unit monitoring the affairs of the NEC. Soon, due to the shortfall of resources, the magnanimity of our prime ministers and the leaders of this country, they had mooted an idea to pull in 10% of the 49 ministries of this nation, of the center, wherein it would be fitted into the uh, NLCPR, as we call it, non-lapsable resources. Now, this was at the disposal of the Northeastern Council for many years. But in 2004, again, the, the department this department was converted into a full-fledged ministry. And the ministry of the donor came into being. Underlying the working system of these two components, the Northeastern Council and the Ministry of Donor, there were too many areas where they were overlapping in the administrative as well as financial powers. So, I, I pray that you give me a little more time. Please. Yeah. Today is my last just, day just, just in for Parliament. Info, just for information, yeah, yeah. there are some more speakers, seven speakers, and they are having 27 minutes time now. Surely, but I will be as Your time brief. is already over, but you please speak. Thank you, speak. sir. This is my last day in Parliament. Please. My please. time is over today. Please. please. Yeah, so, grateful. So, they have areas where they are overlapping financially as well as administratively. What I would like to say today, I would not like to charge or accuse the government, whether it be the government of the day or the previous governments, I would not like to. We are here as ambassadors of our people, and I wish to place this to the government, the center, that they must review the working system, the working system to make it more effective so that the benefits are accrued and targeted to the people for whom it is meant. I think, I think there has to be a serious streamlining in the working system here. The NEC should not be sidelined. It is an important, a very important regional planning body, being represented by the most honorable people in the state, in the region. So, Due acknowledgement should be given to them, and they have to be infused with the funds and resources that has been pulled from these ministries. If the planning, the execution, and the selection of the schemes, the projects, are taken up and decided by this regional planning council, I tell you, it will cover 99% of the loopholes that these funds are facing today. It should not go to waste. We don't have big industries or small functioning viable industries also. 
Our economy is rural in nature. Our one, our requirements are also minimal. It is very, very less. Now, I want to bring it to the notice of the chair that uh, the guidelines and the working system of the donor is faulty, sir. It is faulty. Please don't misconstrue me as criticizing or trying to find faults in the government, in the ministry. But I'm saying this because I have the welfare of the people at heart. Just like how 10 times more the leaders who have conceived this idea must have had. If you see through this, sir, they have already, the donor... Please, ministry, please sir, conclude. Now we have taken twice time what was allocated sure, sure, to you. Please. please. This is my last point. Please. Sir, have already up. they have... Please. Please, please, please sir, please. just please. One, one, two more minutes <laughs> only. Yes, sir. They, have, they have constituted... They have constituted an NLCPR committee in the Ministry of Donor, pulling in various bureaucrats and officers from the finance, from that ministry, and from other related ministries. And they, this committee selects the project. This committee chooses and decides whether how much to give, not to give, or to reject it. This is the committee which, again, advises, briefs the Minister of Donor as to how he should act or respond to the demands of the states. Now, how in the world will this committee understand the sentiments, the needs of the people back there in the northeastern region? It is highly inappropriate, sir. And it is unacceptable that a committee constituted by a center functioning here in, in Delhi, making them to decide the fate of the people of the region, which is not acceptable, sir. Really not acceptable. So I'm giving this paper, sir, to your good office so that you will read and you will have to advise the ministry to review its system of functioning again. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Mani Sanjay Rao.